Inside Michigan Basketball is presented by Meyer. Saturday, the Wolverines face Southern Utah for the first time ever, and let's just say a week of thinking about the Minnesota loss came pouring out in an 87 to 50 win. And after the game, there were some hoops heavyweights in the locker room. Former Wolverine and NBA sharpshooter Duncan Robinson, his coach with the Miami Heat, Eric Spolstra, and seven-time NBA All-Star Tracy McGrady among them. Much more on that coming up later in the show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. You know, the Wolverines have a lot of fresh faces on the team this year, so predictably, there's been some growing pains. You've seen these guys play together for a handful of games, but you still not may know a whole lot about them. Here's an opportunity to get to know the newcomers just a little bit better. Caleb Houston was the most highly touted member of this class, the highest rated recruit for the Wolverines since Glenn Robinson III in 2012. I'd like to say I'm a winner, you know, I just want to make the best play uh, for the team to win, um, do whatever I can do to help my part um, in order to win. Houston is the third Michigan recruit from the Toronto area in the last decade, following the footsteps of fellow Canadians Nick Stauskas and Iggy Brasdakis. When they had a little stint with um, Nick Stauskas and Trey Burke, um, when I was younger, I was watching that um, a lot. And obviously, um, I know Iggy, um, and I've, I watched him when he was here uh, for that one year, um, watched him play. So definitely, um, I knew a lot of Canadians that went here, and I definitely watched a lot of basketball, uh, Michigan basketball growing up. He also had a connection to current Wolverine Zeb Jackson, whom he played with in high school at Monverde Academy in Florida. He was my roommate, um, actually. Um, obviously, he was just telling me, it wasn't too much about basketball, just about like the family aspect, um, the culture, just that the guys there as well as the staff were just really good people. Um, and obviously that translated over to when I actually talked to them um, firsthand and all that stuff was correct, all it was, all it was true. Diabate quick double, now he's single team. He'll pivot, he'll hook, he'll score from seven feet away. Big man Musa Diabate calls himself a versatile two-way player. And based on the small sample size we have, he was right on. I'm able to do a little bit of everything, but like I said, um, I'm mainly a, a defensive-minded player and I, I bring a lot of energy. Um, and I think that's what I'm, I'm going to be able to bring to the team. In case you're hearing Musa for the first time, you may notice the accent. He's from Paris. He came to the States at age 14, didn't start playing hoops until the age of 12. He says it took him a good five months to completely understand the game. Just watching game mostly, um, I was a big fan of Akeem Olajuwon, especially when I started. Um, he was just like, wow, like he's, he's insane. And um, I just, I just kept on watching basketball and um, working outside and um, just kept on working out. Guard Frankie Collins says he chose Michigan for the culture and noticed the talent difference at this level early on in practice. Everyone is good. Everyone has the things that they're good at. So like, that was like the wow for me. Like, like there's some people that you come in and you're like, wow, I didn't know he was like, like can do that or I didn't know he was that good or whatever the case may be. When fellow guard Kobe Bufkin arrived on campus, it was the realization of a childhood dream. I've been looking looking forward to these moments um, since I've been in elementary school, dreaming about going to a big college and be able to play in front of everybody. So it, it's an amazing experience for sure. His name, yes, it's for Kobe Bryant. He says his mom is a big fan. Like that Kobe, he tries to display a multiple skill set. I'm a pretty good playmaker able to score the ball when needed, um, but mainly getting my teammates involved and doing the little things. Grad transfer Devonte Jones was the Sun Belt Player of the Year last season at Coastal Carolina. He says the family atmosphere at Michigan is what drew him here while searching for a step up in competition. Coming from mid-major, you know, the narratives, you know, it's just that I can't do this, but, you know, that's, that's just me coming in with a chip on my shoulder, understanding that it's going to always be people that doubt you. So, um, the experience, I just want to, I want to have fun with my teammates and all that we gave everything, because I don't want to have that, you know, what if we did this, what if we did that moment. So, just, I'm going to take advantage of every day. Up next, last night's game with Southern Utah and a chat with head coach, Joan Howard. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. 
Welcome back to the show. After putting exams behind them earlier this week, the Wolverines once again had a chance to focus their study habits on basketball, welcoming Big Sky defending champ and preseason favorite Southern Utah to Chrysler Center on Saturday night. The Thunderbirds touching down from Cedar City with a top 25 offense nationally. But it was Michigan's offense on full display. Devontae Jones setting the tone out of the gate. First, the top side three, then the stutter step on his way to the hole. The Wolverines up a fistful, Jones with a Baker's dozen. Hunter Dickinson also having a big first half. He draws a double team, but still goes baseline for the jam. On this trip, it's Jones teaming up with freshman Musa Diabate. Jones splits to alley oop to Diabate, who thunders it down over battle. And it's 20 to 10, Michigan. Part of a 12-0 run, Michigan building a 15-point lead. Look at this sequence by a pair of freshmen. Frankie Collins rips the rebound, and Kobe Bufkin is on the move. Up ahead, Bufkin goes in, laid it up, laid it in, and a foul from John Knight. Kobe Bufkin storming down the floor. The bucket and the Band-Aid, it's 37 to 16. They kept feeding Dickinson, and he kept delivering the goods. Hunter passing his season average in the first half with 16 points. This slam capped a 10-zip run. And then it's the professor, Eli Brooks, with the lefty look to Caleb Houston. Give it inside. Houston, a reverse layup is good. How did Eli Brooks thread that needle? Michigan stampeding, leading 49 to 20 at the break. Second half, it was more of the same. Dickinson cleans up the Eli Brooks miss. Dickinson posted his fourth consecutive double-double with 22 and 10. The Wolverines roll 87 to 50. In all, 12 players got in the score column. Today's conversation with Jawan Howard is brought to you by Meyer. Make grocery shopping a slam dunk with Meyer home delivery and pickup. Juwan, there were so many cool things that happened offensively in this one, but I want to ask you about defense first. They averaged 82 points a game. You held them to 50. How do you orchestrate such a defensive performance? Well, uh, practice. You know, we did a really good job coming in on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, Friday with a disposition where we wanted changes. We wanted to come solution-based and figure out ways how we can improve together as a team I'm getting back to our habits on the defensive end and also on the offensive end. I love our defensive disposition tonight from start to finish. And we really got into our guys, defended pretty well, uh, didn't allow too many blow bys. We limited paint touches, and then we also took care of the offensive glass. This was Devontae Jones' first game with multiple three-pointers, also dished out six assists. Is it safe to say this is maybe his best all-round game so far this year? DJ did a really good job of reading the defense. Where the defense does is wrong. And so when they went under the screens, he shot the ball with confidence. Um, when our bids got good screens, he drove the ball to finish or make plays for others. Uh, you know, it was great to see a solid game from not only him, but also others. I'm sure fans are just maybe starting to feel like they're getting to know him. And the thing that strikes me so much is his maturity. Can you speak to that a little bit? Because it seems to shine in any circumstance. Well, he has his face about him. You know, his face is always, you know, locked in, uh, never seems so rattled. Um, at times, I don't know what he's thinking. I know I try to figure it out, but I know he's a competitor. And, you know, any player, you know, when the ba ball is not going in the basket, you know, you can get frustrated. But what DJ does is he stays within the moment. And uh, I, I love that the experience he has um, and that experience is growing and he's getting better and better game by game. Uh, we're going to need his offense, but we also need his play playmaking ability as well. Hunter Dickinson posted his fourth consecutive double-double. Where do you see the most evolution in his game? I would say shooting, outside shooting. He's never I shot this many jump shots because last season, you know, he had like a lot of guys who uh, were pretty good, you know, outside shooters from three. Um, this year, you know, you have a younger guys that are better attacking the basket. Um, Hunter now has been like that other outside threat for us. He's worked on it, but it was one of those things that he always have. And some people are like, wow, where does this outside shooting come from? Well, he sacrificed last year because he had four shooters on the floor every time he was out there. Um, now Hunter is now growing with his game, and each player try to bring something new each year, and that's been one of his you know things that he's brought. 
Uh, he's always had, you know, the passing ability. <laughs> he had that, you know, since the time I'm sure he started playing basketball because he thinks the game. You know, he sees plays before it happens, and that's one of his biggest strengths. After the game, Jawan welcomed a group of dear friends into the Michigan locker room, a group that included a Michigan legend, his former coach with the Miami Heat, and an NBA Hall of Famer. This is your family, right? 20 years from now, you want to have those moments that you talk about, about, you know, sitting around, just having a conversation, and bring up this season, make it a memorable moment, right? And that's, that's what it's all about, it's creating memories. That's what you want to do, man. Because when you're done playing basketball, that's all we have is the memories that we create. If I was any good, your guys' age, I'd want to be sitting right where you all are right now, in this locker room, playing for this guy and this program. He's the best mentor in our association. He was that way as a player. He's been my best mentor. As a, he's an assistant coach player. He mentored me. Uh, and he's bringing that mentorship and leadership and coaching to all of you. This is what it's all about right here. These are the times of your lives. It was great to see how, you know, what they, you know, not just brought their presence, but they came to support and the words they shared with the guys in the locker room was even more special. Just uh, knowing that all that basketball experience and knowledge being shared to some young guys who are just scratching the surface with the game of basketball. And, and they want more and more information. They want to grow. And uh, Duncan Robinson in the building to support. I think it's great for the program to have support on all levels. Still to come, our Elro Steel Man of the Week, and later, we're talking Orange Bowl with the Michigan football team. Time for our Elro Steel Man of the Week. Here's Brian Bush. Devontae Jones asserted himself early and often on Saturday against Southern Utah, scoring all 13 of his points in the first half. He shot five of six from the floor, distributed, rebounded. He was tremendous for the Wolverines as Michigan led wire to wire and took down the Thunderbirds. It felt good, man. Just, you know, this uh, beginning of the season, I ain't been playing the best. You know, I ain't been shooting the best either. But like I said, you know, I'm thankful for this coaching staff and the team, you know, just for trusting in me and believing in me and rocking with me. So um, I'm going to just keep getting in the gym. I'm going to keep working. You know, I'm just keep praying, just doing what I got to do. And hopefully on the court, um, it can all keep coming together like it did tonight. The sign of a good point guard is getting others involved. Well, on Saturday, the Wolverines played 13, 12 found the score column, and Devontae Jones was leading the charge. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Brian Bush. This week's time machine takes us back to December of 2015. Karis LeVert posted the fourth triple-double in program history with 13 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists in a 77-62 win over Northern Kentucky. LeVert hesitates, leaves it for Donnell, leaves it up and in! The triple-double for Karis LeVert, the first of his Michigan career. LeVert also passed 1,000 career points in that win over the Norse. Picked up by Amude, had it knocked out of his hands by Walton to Donnell, up ahead for Walton, leaves it for Dawkins, highlight real jam! And then, just four days later, against Youngstown State, it happened again. There's the triple-double, Walton with the rebound. This time by Derek Walton, Jr. The junior point guard scored 10 points, yanked down 11 boards, and dished out 13 helpers. The fifth triple-double in Michigan Hoops history. One of basketball's rarest feats, happening twice in less than a week. It's been a career year for a key member of the women's team. We'll have that story next and later, football gears up for the national semifinals. Welcome back, we're talking women's hoops now. Today in Connecticut, Michigan takes on number five Baylor in the Basketball Hall of Fame Women's Showcase. The same Bears team that knocked them out of the NCAA tournament last year in an overtime thriller. Last Sunday, the Wolverines moved to 2-0 in the Big Ten with a 73-61 win over Minnesota. Miss consistency, Nas Hillman led the way with 25 points and eight rebounds. Leah Brown hit double digits for the third straight game with 19, connecting on eight of 14 shots. It was Michigan's third straight win over the Gophers and the first game against them in almost two years. Both of last season's contests were canceled. 
Nas is clearly the focus for every team that plays the Wolverines, but the emergence of senior Emily Kaiser is making the team a little more difficult to defend. Here's Sarah Van Meter. After spending three seasons as a role player and a backup to classmate Nas Hillman, Kaiser is one of just two Wolverines who has started all 11 games this season. Blocked by Kaiser. Emily's emergence is not surprising. She leads the team in rebounding and shots blocked. She's second in steals and third in scoring. I feel like I'm playing with a lot of confidence. I just go out there and, you know, try and be consistent um, and just try and, you know, help out the team. These last three years of having, you know, to kind of sit on the sidelines, um, you learn a lot on the sidelines, but then also, I mean, you can really focus on yourself, um, whether it's on off days getting in the gym or, you know, just getting up extra, extra shots that you can really focus on yourself. Patience. Emily is a patient person, always hoping, then believing her time would come. You work so hard for so many years and you never really know if it's going to pay off. You know, that's not exactly why you're doing it. You're doing it for the team and obviously you hope it's going to end up in playing time. It's going to end up in starting, um, but it's never guaranteed. So I think, you know, I've put in all this work and for it to finally pay off. Like it is kind of a surreal feeling. And yeah, it's just fun too. <laughs> and her journey has helped prepare for the leadership role she now has, especially with the freshman class. I've been through it all. I mean, my freshman year, I was pretty much on the practice team from the start of day one. Um, you can't complain about it. You gotta buy into the role. I mean, that's what the team needed from me that year. Um, and I think every single year, my role's kind of changed. I, I don't think once I ever complained about it. And it's hard, so I, you know, I always acknowledge that with the freshmen, like, we understand why you're feeling like this. Trust me, like, I was just there. Kaiser comes from an athletic family. Her brother and sister played college basketball, and her dad, Brian, ran track at Purdue. But there was never pressure at home to become a Boilermaker, but... He might have swayed um, me from not going to IU just because of that rivalry. Emily says that her mom, Chris, is her biggest fan. And growing up in the basketball crazy state of Indiana, along with playing sports against her siblings, has helped mold her into the player she is today. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Sarah Van Meter. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Welcome back everyone. The Michigan football team has been in full go mode for almost a week now. And though not in the forefront, the memories of that Big Ten championship game a couple weeks ago are still crisp in their minds. Just feels good every day knowing, like waking up every day. And I, I actually have the, uh, a board in my room that says Big Ten champs and I just wake up every day, look at it, and it's just a great feeling. That's never going to leave my mind. That's, that's going to stick with me forever. But, you know, it's time to put that to the side for right now and really just focus on this Orange Bowl because this is a big game coming up, and, uh, you know, it needs all the attention it can get. And with us not playing, like, the next week, you know, you have a little more time to, to enjoy the win. So I enjoyed it for a couple of days, went back home uh, with my family, and then once I got back to Ann Arbor, it was go time. The guys say after a break, there can be some sluggishness, but not with this group. I haven't seen that. You know, guys have uh, come out running around, fired up, you know, attacking the weight room, attacking practice. Uh, it's been a thing of beauty. The energy was like day one of uh, spring ball. Uh, it just it felt good to be back out there, uh, banging, with the, banging with the guys and, and getting after it. I asked Zane Rastil if he ever envisioned a day like this when he committed to Michigan. He said yes, thanks to then future teammate, Kate McNamara. He got my number however it was, and he told me, he was like, if you come to Michigan, we're gonna win a, a, a championship, we're gonna beat Ohio State. And you know, I kinda, I sat, I thought about it, and um, I took another visit, and then after that visit, I flipped, and here we are today, playing for a spot in national championship. So Cade McNamara, the guy who delivers the ball to you, is the guy responsible ultimately for you being here. Yeah. The holiday season will look different for the Wolverines this year, an accommodation they are more than happy to make. I went back home to see my family, which was cool. So, you know, I'm not, you know, it's going to maybe suck not seeing them on Christmas, you know, seeing my sisters and whatnot, but uh, it's going to be good, you know. It's, it's going to be good being there with my brothers, um, spending some quality time with them, that bonding even more and getting ready for that game. I look at it from the perspective of this is our Christmas gift, a trip to Miami. Uh, yeah, it's just look at it like that. Uh, and then, you know, the, the 31st is just a late Christmas gift. And, you know, handle it the right way. We'll be really happy with the gift. And that would certainly come with a bow on top. 
a programming note for you. There's no show next week due to the Christmas holiday. And then we're back at it January 2nd with an Orange Bowl edition of Inside Michigan Football. We certainly hope to see you then. And until that time, have a great holiday.